I will work with that. Um, any, uh, Scott, any more on that on the budget or uh, Miranda, any more on that on the budget issues? You know, I'll, I'll jump in um, real quick. And I, I know uh, Trustee McVeigh has a, has a you, the, the concern I have right now is, is around timing. We're mm -hmm. in a scenario right now where we have decisions that we need to make related to, to next year. And, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, we don't know what the number is going to be. And I think we can have a few different plans to address it from a, a paper standpoint and, and ideas on paper. But the reality is we're in a spot now with positions open that we need to, to make some decisions about how to proceed. Um, so I, I, I would like to, to ask, well, we have two, well, we have one, uh, one and a half uh, vacant positions. And, and I happen to be in the know in Manchester. And, and feel confident that that uh, Principal Bizu will come to agreement on a contract with Manchester on uh, this coming Monday, and and likely resign from Slinger Schools effective June thirtieth on this coming Tuesday, which will leave us with two uh, principal vacancies: Pleasant Ridge and and the middle school. Um, we have talked a little bit at the at the budget committee, and I really would like to hear from the other board members. You, the the question and issue comes if if we were to post those internally, and it would um, really paint a picture of us looking to reduce our total number of, of administrators next year by by essentially two and, uh, and, and allow for some savings to be had. Um, if we post those externally, um, there's a likelihood that we would potentially end up with uh, candidates from outside of the district and therefore um, we would not be in a position to um, reduce through administration uh, because Certainly for the bargaining unit, you know, if we, we replace outside, if we were to conduct uh, administrative layoffs, um, it would follow seniority. And so it would, would, we would be, you know, limited there. Um, that being said, we, we have very clear interest in, in, in um, making sure that our leadership um, at the building level of the highest quality and, and, and an opportunity to move forward. So I guess I've been looking for clear direction from the board as to how they, you would like us to handle uh, those two positions. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll speak on that. Um, I guess I look at the fact that um, uh, Principal Bizu is uh, being selected as a, a superintendent uh, in Chelsea. One of our former principals was selected as superintendent. I think this speaks well of our, the ability of our, our, our staff. In, uh, and it shows, I think, that we have uh, some um, quality people. So I would prefer to look internally first. Again, I, I'm a, a, I'll, I'll, I'll admit I'm looking at it in part in great deal from a fiscal responsibility point of view. Uh, I know internally we would have some financial savings there uh, if we did that. Uh, and, and right now that, that seems to be paramount. They have to be uh, quality people. I believe we have quality people here in our district. Yeah. Yeah, I'd kind of echo what Dennis said. I mean, uh, even if, if we if we look at adopting a budget less two hundred and fifty dollars, which you know what they're saying, maybe up to six hundred and fifty dollars per student. I mean, at two hundred and fifty dollars per student, we're we need to come up with a like one point three million dollar savings and. Um, I mean, Scott, questions to you is, I mean, do we, do you feel we have adequate people that could fulfill these roles? And, and if so, I, I think that is, that's the fiscal responsible thing to do is that we look to, to save right there right now. And um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think even trying to save $1.3 million in such a tight budget like we have is not going to be easy. And, and so we have to look at every, no stone goes unturned, I guess. Michael? Uh, in the MASB talk uh, a few days ago, some districts have already started playing with uh, cuts, some of them as, as large as $400 to $500 cut to per pupil expenditure, and then working out, gaming out scenarios, so to speak. Um, $250 cut sounds wonderful next to some of those horror scenarios I was reading. So I'm wondering if, um, I'm all in favor of looking internally. I think it makes good sense for administrators, it makes good sense in a lot of ways to have a kind of a, a an upward flow from the classroom to the administration. I'm all in favor of that. 
but um, I'm wondering if we're going to have some opportunities to have a sense of what some of the scenarios are for the coming year. Uh, have uh, not something outside of the um, finance committee, I guess, because I'd really list, like to be a fly on that wall, but I'd, I'd become a quorum. Uh, I, I don't know how to get that information, but I'd love to hear and maybe offer ideas as well. So I'm open to hearing what you're working on. Let me let me just before I get to opinions on anything, just uh, just some clarification, Scott, if you can, because I know Tim and Dennis and I, um, sitting on that committee, have heard a lot more possibly than than the other trustees. So can you just provide a little bit of clarification when you um, you know talking about the financial savings? You said quote reduced by two. Um, we've heard a couple of numbers thrown out. Can you, in, in your eyes, explain through choice A, posting only internally, and choice B, posting externally as well, how, what's the math on that savings? Just so everybody kind of has the fuller picture that we've been talking about. Yeah, the, the, in, in rough numbers, essentially, what we, we assign the value of approximately $125,000 per administrator. So if we were to say we are going to post internally, higher uh, from within, and it wouldn't necessarily be administrators, certainly teachers uh, could apply as well, um, that we would we would look to, to save in the neighborhood of $250,000, which would mean we would be moving people into those roles. And so we would have a high middle school principal, we would have a Pleasant Ridge principal. Depending on where the person who was taking that role moved from, their position may be go unfilled or someone would slide into their role, but it would result in the end in having two vacant positions. My sense is I would admit, anticipate those to be administrative. It could also be uh, a, a teaching position, an administrative position that would end up being vacant at the end of this process. And I would 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 say, not knowing exactly, we would book around two hundred fifty thousand dollars in savings. If we look at a two hundred fifty dollars student reduction, which was a conversation I think Michael we had yesterday, um, that's about a one point three million dollar loss in revenue. So if you think of one, we had some some adjustments we were going to need to make because of increasing costs moving into this year. If we were to work through those, then we would additionally have a, a slight increase in expenses um, and then a $1.3 million uh, deficit. I would, I would say we would be looking to deal with about a $2 million issue overall. Uh, and these, these um, posting internally would potentially allow us to apply in the neighborhood of $250,000 to, to those savings. But again, to, I think Jennifer makes a good point. We would have principals for Pleasant Ridge in the middle school, um, but it would result in a, in a net loss of two positions. Yeah, with a maximum possible return on investment of 250. Correct. If it was to admin that transferred over. Yeah. All right, thanks. I just wanted everybody to have all of the information. Susan? So, um, we, we have to post externally. I mean, I'm one person and a board of seven. Um, Scott, I'm glad you're asking our opinion. I think that's really, really important. Um, our, you know, you just did a presentation on the DEI coalition and number three of the five objectives was recruitment and hiring. We heard this in the community um, conversations. Um, I was at all except for one. Um, that's what I heard in the small groups. The large groups is about hiring practices, making sure that we are providing opportunities and hopefully getting people um, who are um, from diverse uh, backgrounds, marginalized um, communities, um, and providing that opportunity um, for, you know, for, uh, to, to bring more to, to our um, community. Um, you know, I, we, that's where I stand 100% is we have to post externally. Um, looking at, uh, you know, Brad, um, him leaving and Betty leaving and those positions being open, um, we would have we would have had the budget problem with that existing right those positions aren't like we would have moved forward looking not even thinking about those positions so we have have the money set aside for that and could get savings with that as well having new people come in to those positions um so i i really think 
um, that's where I stand. So. Other comments? I do have a quick one. Um, Wait a minute, Paul, Paul raised his hand first. <laughs> I, I guess I have a question and then, um, I mean, for me, we've always, almost always filled internally um, as far as I've been around and I, I don't think we've ever gone off the rails for that. I think if we do go externally and we still do internal, we still just need to pick the best person for the job, budget neutral, um, but I guess, from a budget standpoint, have we heard anything from the community about, I'm not sending my student to school this year. Do we know that people had to sell their homes and move out? Or, I mean, are we looking at a flat budget projection, projection from the student perspective? Um, so one, we, we did ask, we did ask the, the community in terms of to provide us some feedback as to what their thoughts were in terms of whether or not they would be returning. Um, we did get you know feedback from them. It's not an exact science right now. Only one person who uh, filled it out indicated they were not coming based on um, a concern around returning to school relative to the kind of the COVID closure. But we have seen a fair number of people who are moving out of state uh, across the state. Um, so um, I think it's you know certainly we're looking to use school of choice to help manage that number and we intend to do so in a, a sort of method kind of like we did we talked about in the previous year but um i think right now our budget plan would be zero but that's a that's a soft number right now michael uh off and on i hear talk about the state playing around with the mipsers burden uh that we have and uh, maybe delaying payments or something like that. Do you, have you heard anything, uh, Scott or Steve, uh, from the state level about that? Yeah, I've heard that they are, there's are in discussions to change the, the calculation essentially to try and smooth out the, the actuarial impact, um, not necessarily just, so it would, would essentially what they're saying is they would not make it go up, but they would use that to keep it where it's at is, is kind of the conversation I heard. Um, but that was a, about three weeks ago, and, and I, I think I mentioned last night. In the in the, it's been eerily quiet for about the past two weeks, related to to the state budget and and things like that. So I'm hopeful um, because of, you know every, we're we're not alone. Every school district across the state is looking to adopt a budget um, based on on not knowing. And so um, I know there's pressure on them to come out with some some initial guidance, but I don't think they have any. Thank you. The expiry date on news from Mich uh, from Lansing is uh, very short indeed. Uh, thank you. Tim? You know, I was, I was going to ask, so kind of in response with, to Susan there, so if we, if we don't post externally the um, admin jobs, we still have other jobs that are posted externally. Correct. Per, per Kurt's report last year or last week or two weeks ago. So, um, so the, there is still, you're, we're still looking externally and, and, and looking for diverse candidates. That, that's correct. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. At, the, at the, largely the certified staff or support staff level, that's correct. Well, yeah, obviously exclusively with the exception of these two positions. Uh, Dennis? Yeah, I, I just keep coming back to the finances. We've got a $2 million gap here, and I'm looking for any savings we can get. I'd love to be able to go externally on those, but where are we going to get the $2 million? Um, so I'm looking for every penny I can get, quite honestly. Heidi, I, you, I know you facilitate to me, but I guess I'd like you to, uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to give my opinion. I yes, it's time. <laughs> I think that we should um, we should post outside uh, because I think it's the right thing to do. But I think we do need to look at you know what's the cost. You know, as we evaluate what's the skill set, what do they bring to the table, and and all that stuff. We don't have to. Um, you know, you're posting inside, you're posting outside, you're looking for the best person, we're looking for the most cost-effective solutions. 
I think we do need to aggressively look at that, but we don't know yet what we, we may not even be able to attract anybody from outside, you know? And so I think we need to be looking inside and we need to be looking outside for what's the best, the best person, the best leader and the best um, price point. Um, but to say we're not going to look outside, I don't think it's okay. I think we do need to look outside and we need to evaluate all our options. And I think we need to be aggressively looking at our budget, not just, you know, it could be 600. So, you know, when we look at 250, that's not even half of the 600. So I think we need to look at, okay, what if it is 250? What if it's 450? And what if it's 650? And what are those scenarios as opposed to, you know, worst case and not so bad, but, you know, there's probably three levels as opposed to two levels that we need to kind of think about and be prepared for. Jennifer? Yeah, um, so thanks for everybody's comments. And I, I wanna make sure, I, I think you kind of have a split vote here, Scott. So whatever you need before we get off the call, please let us know. Um, I First, I wanna say we have strong personnel. This is not a personnel issue at all. Um, it, it is a financial issue. Um, first of all, I don't know if the people internally in admin positions or in teaching positions or other positions want to do these particular roles. So that's a, a TBD. Um, I think many of them are excellent and would be great candidates. Um, but I really think we would be doing our community a disservice after what we've just come through to not listen to what I heard at these listening sessions and what we're committing to in this coalition and what we're um, what we've been talking about for years, right? I mean, in Celine, with everybody's, you know, we've heard the word nepotism. We've heard the words, um, you know, in the past, and it's 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 just it doesn't set well with me. And this is I was I was open with Dennis and Tim and Miranda and Scott. It, it just it doesn't set well with me. Um, and the feedback that I've been getting, particularly on the Pleasant Ridge principal position, um, because Brad is new and, and um, you know, that's that's recent news, but Betty had, had submitted her resignation a little while ago. And because I came from that school, I've gotten a lot of feedback. Um, so I think there needs to be a lot of collaboration with the community, um, with the parents in that building, with the staff in that building. Um, and I think um, to Heidi's point, thank you, I, I agree. I think we posted external, we posted internal, and we look for the absolute best candidate with being extremely mindful in all areas what we're gonna do with the budget. Um, so if I vote, I vote internal and external. Um, Tim. Okay, sorry, I keep speaking up here. Um, so I, you know, it really comes down to to Scott. Then I guess if it is kind of a split vote, it comes down to Scott. I mean, he, at the end of the day, we we count on S Scott's got to be Scott's the one that's in charge of the budget. I know Miranda works with Scott, but we hold Scott accountable for the budget. We hold Scott accountable for his his team, for his uh, who 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 the teachers and the admin. So. Um, you know, Scott's going to be the one looking at the numbers. I mean, if we're, we're talking $250 a cut, yeah, that's $2 million. That's terrible. But like we've said, that's only a third of it. So are we willing to hire somebody externally potentially and then laying off some of our good, good teachers we have right now or good admin right now? I mean, that's, those are the hard questions we have to, you know, answer. This is not these these aren't small numbers this is not a game i mean this is this is this is important business and i think at the end of the day scott is going to have to own this and so you know we can we can come with all of our ideas that we want and this and that but it's up to scott scott's going to be the one that's going to be held accountable for it sorry scott <laughs> it's, thanks tim it's not, it's not clear and i, I want to be cognizant and respectful of something that that tim said because i know we have a lot of community members watching and i know that we have a lot of staff watching and um there's been a lot of discussion right uh, about about staff and and i don't know if i'm at the point where it necessarily means if we post external and have an external candidate candidate we're laying off staff i, I i'm not necessarily equating it because I would go through that budget and cut things first, <laughs> um, other things. So I, I, I don't wanna say if we do this, then we have to cut this position in the classroom or this this other thing. Um, it, 
it may or may not be, but I, I don't know if we're there yet. I mean, Scott, or what do you think? <laughs> I mean, yeah, at, at some point it, it, we, we, we would be there. Yeah, I mean, it, ideally we're in a scenario where we, we would not be replacing would be the extent to it we get to. Um, but, you know, if we're talking about numbers north of the $250 cut, um, it's, I don't see a scenario we it, we were able to avoid um, reductions in force that would probably exceed our attrition, our ability to deal with it through attrition. But that's why I think, you know, I think, uh, you know, we've Heidi talked about different scenarios and, and the board, the committee, budget committees heard I'm hesitant to, 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 to the scenarios beyond 250 are, are ones that, you know, that, that we would have a lot of people on this call wondering what it means for them and their families. And so I think we're very cognizant of not trying to create a sense of alarm, but by the same token, um, very worried about the timing of, of federal funding and, and the amount of federal funding. Um, you know, and it, it's just, it's a it challenge unlike, unlike previous years where it felt like we, we had a much better sense of how bad the picture would be. The reality is that the structural picture is incredibly bad. There's a likelihood of a federal number to come in. The timing and amount of that federal number are completely um, not in our favor in terms of knowledge of, of that. And like, like Jennifer said, we, I'm, I'm gonna have to make decisions. We're gonna have to make decisions with imperfect information that could fundamentally impact people's lives. I'm very cognizant of the fact that that responsibility rests with me. And I'm sick of people taking money from schools. Can I, can I just say that? I think everybody on this phone call feels the same way or Zoom call. Like it's always the schools, always. I, I'm, just, I'm just sick of it. <laughs> well, and that's why it's so important for us, not just us as board members, but our whole community and, and, and everybody to just really talk to those people in Washington. Talk to as many people as possible because we need that. We have to have that. And it's not just our community, it's all the communities in every school district in Michigan. It's a huge, huge issue. Dennis? Yeah, I, again, I keep coming back to the numbers. We talked about, you, you said the 250, down 250 per student is a somewhat of an optimistic figure. And even at that, we're down $2 million then with revenue. If this turns into uh, something closer to the 650, we're looking at, possibly $4 million. There's no way we can fill that without having some significant cuts there with a reduction in force. There's just no way we can do it. The numbers just don't, don't add up. Your, your, our payroll is what, 80%, 85% uh, roughly in that, those ranges. So there's no other way we can we can tap. You, you can go through it line by line, but the, the, you know, so much of your budget is tied to those salaries. We don't have any other place. So I think it, it would be fiscally imprudent of us to go external for those positions if we uh, have qualified internal candidates. This is all based on that. If we don't have qualified internal candidates, then no, I'm not going to put somebody in there. I, I would never vote for that. Let's see what we got. Susan? Um, can I say, so the last time that we had uh, retirements, which included Pleasant Ridge, actually, um, we, we moved people around. We did the internal, or well, the just district, did the moving around of, um, people to fill those positions. Um, then again, maybe looking at cost savings, but that right there uh, would have been an opportunity and I was hoping for um, it to be an opportunity to, um, you know, get just, you know, it, it, these higher up positions, admin positions should be posted. Like you said, even internal candidates, um, teachers who are doing their professional development, who are going and getting their PhD, you know, are we utilizing them? So, it, you know, it very well could be, um, you know, and an, a person who um, is currently in our district, right? So I think even providing them that opportunity it totally makes sense. Um, and, um, but I, yes, I think to our 
core values, um, the values of the community, um, you know, I think it, it is important. I wish we had posted those positions before. I wish the um, heritage uh, assistant principal position um, wasn't a failed search. Um, you know, I, those opportunities need need to be there at that high admin position. And, and it's, again, it's existing positions. So um, why are we looking at those specifically just because people have left in that area? All right, that's Paul. So um, from a, a morale point of view, internal people look for that upward mobility in the district. They're out there, like Susan just said, earning their PhDs, doing the work, doing that. But if we do, and we did go out external, we had a candidate, then the budget fell to hell and we had to put those on hold. So you're, it's a little fine line about managing expectations, both internal and external. And ultimately, I want to ping what Tim said, the board has one employee, that is superintendent, and he is charged to run the district. So if, and he makes all the decisions. So I'm pleased that he reached out to get our opinions in this case, but ultimately through his evaluation is where we, do satisfaction or dissatisfaction with the hiring process and everything else that goes on in the district. So, it, you know, it's a many edged sword here. And um, I, I, you know, I, I don't think that helped you, Scott, but you know, there's there's points on all, on all sides. So uh, to me, budget's gonna be the driving factor this year. Real, real quick, um, to the point of, putting the pressure on Scott. Yes, that's his job. Um, but our job is to approve the budget. And I think that's a point, um, you know, that, that Scott's talking to and um, bringing it up before we do approve that budget and, and factoring in that in. Um, so, I, you know, Scott, you can blame me if you want. <laughs> I learned a long time ago, you don't blame school board members. <laughs> So you make it 12 years in this seat. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. It, it's a very tough thing, Scott, but but we're behind you and pulling for you and, and you know, whatever we can do to help um, support you in this. And, and keep up those community conversations. I know we, we talked about this on the finance committee, the meeting the yeah, other day. Yeah, that's a good point. We, we yeah. do, I do plan to have two sessions actually this coming uh, Wednesday, the 17th, uh, in an effort to engage the community in the conversation. I think it is important for the community to understand it has been quiet the last couple of weeks. And that, so I don't want people to feel like somehow the budget issue that I think was, was gaining some, some media attention um, is gone or been resolved. It has not. It's just gone quiet. And so um, I, I do intend to, to share information later this week about sessions on Wednesday the 17th to, to have some dialogue around uh, these issues. And write to your legislators, everybody, anybody. <laughs> have done it. Okay. Anything else? I think we're good. All right.